Uh, welcome to my user's manual for using your new Galaxy Tab. I just got mine. And if you're like me and you're not a cell phone guru, uh, you may need to have a user's guide or a user's manual on how to use the functions and features of your new Galaxy Tab. Now this uh, is uh, Galaxy Tab A, but it shouldn't matter if you have a more expensive one. Uh, they use the same operating systems. In fact, it's the operating system which is really what we're going to be going through. Uh, I happen to have version 6 of Android, which is Marshmallow. Uh, you may have Lollipop, or you may have version 7, uh, the latest. They're all very similar, and most of these uh, functions should work the same way. Just to show you, there's a couple buttons along the side here. This is your power button and your volume control button. Uh, I'm not going through how to install the operating system. When you get your Galaxy Tab, it pretty much gives you the setup and installs everything for you and even grabs your contacts from your phone and or uh, any other accounts that you may uh, get into. I'm basically going to go through and just give you a guide on using the Galaxy Tab. But uh, for putting the sleep, a simple tap would put your Galaxy Tab to sleep. To turn it off, you would press and hold until the power off button came up and then you would hit power off. We'll let that go off for a moment and then to power back on you must press and hold until you see the logo screen come up. Now when you see the logo come up you can release and it'll do, do its boot up. I don't normally boot up uh, every day. I just leave it in uh, sleep mode and let the battery run down it takes a couple days actually to unless you're constantly using it or playing uh, high graphics video games or something your battery will hold up for two or three days for you it doesn't want to go into landscape mode and get stuck which has happened to me actually right now it is going into landscape mode and rotating but just so you can see how you can change that you can scroll down now let's just back out and try this again and say you're in portrait mode pull down and then hit auto rotate so let's rotate this so you can see the auto rotate and that will allow it to auto rotate all right now to begin with Let's talk about the three buttons. In my case, it's on the bottom. I mean, on yeah, when it's in tablet mode, it's on this side. Some tablets have it on the bottom. Um, I have the 9.7 inch, which is uh, the 4x3 rather than the widescreen tablet, which is a 10.1. Um, but the operating system should function the same way. You can slide back and forth from screens just simply doing this. But let's talk about these three buttons. Uh, you can open up an application, let's say like uh, music, by tapping on it. And then if you want to back out, you can hit the return button. The other thing you can do anytime you're in any application, we'll go into my files. You can hit the, the home button. And it'll bring you home to the home screen. Even if you started over here and you opened up OneNote, and that came open, and I hit the home screen, it'll bring you back out again. It's not quite the same as the back button because if you're browsing, the back button only steps you back one step, where the home button is going to bring you all the way back to the to the home screen that you're in 
The last button is the menu button. Even though I, uh, I'm going to open up YouTube now. I don't have a Wi-Fi on yet. So it's just going to open up the YouTube app with no connection. I hit the home button and we'll go back. Now just because I hit the home button does not take the apps out. They are just minimized in the background and are still running. You have to go to the menu button, which is this button here. And when you press the menu button, you can then X out of these or just slide them over like that. Either way. Um, go into your menu and you have a whole bunch open. You can hit the close all and that will get rid of them all as well. Finding your Wi-Fi, you can hit that button. It'll try to automatically connect you to the Wi-Fi. If you're at home, that will work fine. It will know just where to go. But here, it needs to find the Wi-Fi network, and so it's doing a search. It found uh, AT&T. Uh, we'll need to open up uh, a connection first. So let's hit the home screen go back it's not as simple as that we need to hit this settings button Wi-Fi can connections it says AT&T Wi-Fi and in this case I have to go to the login web page so it'll tell you okay we're connected but let's go to the web page and there it'll open up the web page for us and that didn't work That doesn't work. Go to history. Clear browsing data. Clear data. Here we go. Complementary. Put in my room number. One one two. Put my name in. Connect. Just in case you want to know how to connect in a hotel, that's how you do it. Okay, so I'm in there now. I can go back to the home screen. Open up calendar. And then if I want to exit out a calendar permanently, instead of running it in the background, I would hit the menu button, hit the X, and then I can go back and open up my Chrome, search the web, hit the search, and then type in something like uh, goldfish types. It opens up the web, brings up your search items. Settings. Once again, the gear icon. Let me see that nicely. We're going to go over to display, which is coming down here. You see that it says display. And you can adjust the screen brightness if it's too bright or you want it brighter or you can click auto. <clears throat> the other thing you can do is you can try the screen um, mode and change it from adaptive display to reading mode. And actually at first I thought, wow, this just turns it into a kind of a yellow screen and I didn't like that but after reading a while I uh, I tried this mode and really liked it for for reading so you may want to try it too uh, you still have a glass that is very reflective you can see the lamp there that's not going to change anything um, so you always have to find uh, when you're reading an area where you're not reflecting off the glass 
uh, low ambience or whatever, but it's kind of nice. I was reading on the airplane and I turned it. I turned the adaptive mode into the to this reading mode, and I really enjoyed doing that. But uh, normal display, I definitely like the brighter, the brighter look for everyday use. Okay, so how do I find out what uh, operating system I'm using? You can stay in settings, go all the way down to about device down here on the bottom. And it'll tell you everything. Device name, Galaxy Tab A, model number, and Android version 6.0.1. So I have that version. If you bought yours a year ago, you probably have Lollipop. You could have upgraded it to 6. And even today, I, you can get Android version 7 on some of your devices. Battery and storage. All these things that you want to know give you a lot of information about battery. More than you probably ever care to know. Storage. Um, I did put an SD card in. I went and got a 64 gigabyte SD card. It shows only about 6 gigabytes, 5.99 in use. And I still have out of my, it says 60. So I didn't quite get 64 out of that 64 gigabyte card. But that, that's the way things are when you're looking at uh, bytes. One of the things that you would want to do is, when, if you did get a card, to transfer as much as you could off of the internal uh, device storage. Now one of the things you want to do is we'll go into our files. You can see I have this SD card and I move my music and my videos and my documents as much as I could to external storage. But your applications you can also move. And the way you want to do that is you can go to the home that would minimize that. Go to the settings. Press on the gear icon to bring up settings. Find the applications. Hit applications. Application manager. It'll load all your applications. And then you can look at those and it'll say internal storage use and if you want click on that it'll allow you to change it to SD card to off the move now it's Instead of taking up space on the internal storage, it's moved it over to the SD card and you have more room for your internal storage space. Now, not all applications allow you to do that. Some of them uh, do not give you the option. So we just moved Acrobat, Adobe Acrobat out onto the card, Amazon. It's on internal storage. It allows you to change SD card to look to move. Now this particular transfer um, screen does not go into the landscape mode for some reason. It stays in portrait, but it's not one you really do anything with other than transferring your apps from internal to the external SD card. my games and stuff on that screen so how do you change screens you just pinch down like that and you can add more screens and now we got a new screen we can go into our apps did you see that we'll go back so you can see that go back to the home screen we're on this blank screen now I just created we go to all of our apps then we can pick any app we want 
and just drag it up and drop it and now that is on that screen and you notice the dots here whoops I accidentally brought up calendar go back but you'll see the dots here that tells you which screen you're on relative to all the screens and then the last possible screen is this one here and if you want to move that anywhere you can move it anywhere on the screen you like if you want to remove it let's say you want to add this one on but you want to remove this one you just take it and say remove that doesn't delete it just removes it from the screen now we got all these screens there's one other screen this one here which is the briefing screen you may notice that mine I don't see it because I have it on off I can turn it back on and then or turn it off and then it has this briefing screen I don't really want that so I'll pinch down whoops let's go back to the home screen and pinch a little easier pinch down turn that off and that's how you move those icons around these icons down here are fixed you can move those too but they they're fixed to no matter what screen you go to you I'm always going to see my my mail my calendar whoops my calendar but you can I decided what what, what icons I wanted there I wanted my file manager I wanted my mail I wanted my calendar I wanted my smart manager this tells you all about your battery usage your storage, your RAM, your security, you can clean all. So those are the ones I wanted on all of the time. So they're the ones I picked to, to be on every screen. But then I got my production screen for my Microsoft Word products, my maps, Bible, Sky Map. Uh, my entertainment screen is really my center screen, my home screen. Uh, I really don't want this screen I just set up. So I can remove that and pinch down and then remove the whole screen. This one's fighting me. You gotta press it and then until it turns red and then remove. file manager press and hold the menu button that will split your screen then you can open up YouTube and work on this side look at Facebook surf the web and watch a video at the same time Bring up YouTube. Split screen. Be on the web. adjust size whatever you need now to close out of these press that use the X out close maximize minimize let's maximize it close it now when you're in an application not all of them but some applications let you minimize it like that not just minimize it to the background like we did here but minimize it on screen 
like so. Now notice that when it's minimized like this, you can, as long as these, you go like that and these are highlighted, you can stretch it to whatever size you want, which means you can have an application in the background and this one here, which I find handy because I can be going through uh, either, you can be online or in this case, I have a Bible open. One of the ways to take a screenshot is just to wipe your hand across the face, like so. And I don't know if you noticed the animation, but it just took a screenshot and we could go into our images. open up the latest screenshot and that's the screenshot we just did simply by swiping our hand across another method to take the screenshot sometimes putting your hand across like that can be difficult and so another way is to press and hold the home button and the power button simultaneously I find it a little tricky but it'll show an animation when it works and see how it slid up and then we can go into our files and should be able to find that screenshot there it is that's a screenshot not the actual picture of the desktop so use the camera we're going to open up applications find the camera once it opens find something that snap picture of take a picture if you want to record a video hit the video record and start recording pause or for capture capture go back so we, we get out after taking a picture, we can go into our file manager, go to images, open up the image we just took. Videos, open up the video and choose a player. And now we have a video. The change wallpaper. I showed you before how you can pinch to add more desktops. The other thing you do is press and hold, and you can add desktops like that. But notice down here it has wallpaper. So to change wallpaper. Hit wallpaper. You can use your own photographs or you can choose one from the images that are already on your tablet. Set as wallpaper and now that becomes our new wallpaper. Now the transfer files from our tablet to our laptop What we're going to do is just use the port that you usually plug in to charge. But instead of using the, the power, you're just going to use the USB end. So take that off the power module and then plug it into a USB port on your laptop. And once you do that, you can then use your laptop to search for your Galaxy tab. Double click on it. Here's your tablet. 
Here's the external card. You can take files like this one, drag it off from the file manager or the desktop of your laptop, put it right here in the documents, or what I'll do for your purposes is put it right here in the root of the SD card on the tablet. So we come over here now, open up our tablet, go to the SD card, and you see Berlin Skimmer's manual. I just transfer it over. And it's just as easy to open up things from the tablet back on the laptop and open up any documents. All these documents are currently on my tablet. So once again, if you go to your PC, you can find a Galaxy tab, open that up. And you're seeing through this connection here, your regular charge port, but only going into your laptop, which by the way, your laptop is now charging your tablet and also allowing you to exchange files between the two. And you can open up your tab tablet documents and move them back and forth between your laptop and your tablet. Your tablet also now has what is called side sync and I have side sync on my tablet and also on my laptop so I can share files back and forth or even view my tablet on my laptop using side sync. And you can see it's now making a connection. And my tablet just is now showing off. It turned off here, but you can have them both on if you want. But I uh, now am being able to view my tablet on my laptop as the full screen, exactly what I would see. And I could uh, maximize, rotate, and use my laptop or actually use my tablet from my laptop with the laptop mouse um, i actually not sure what the big benefit of that would be i just showed you how without using side sync how i can transfer files back and forth but it is a feature that you can now use the side sync I really enjoy OneNote. I use it to insert notes and I can go over to the side here and pull up a list of all my different notes I've taken. And even done a screen capture with it. Also with OneNote you can bring it down like that, move it around, put it in the background. Um, and resize it to whatever size you like. If that's not quite readable, you can stretch it out some more and all the way back out again. Go down to a small one, uh, just an icon, bring it back up. Or if you want to X out of it completely, you can do that. Another thing about OneNote, it also has a quick note feature to it that many may not realize by going into the menu over here and saying Start Badge. So the quick note feature is called Start Badge. And so even if I get out of OneNote, X out of it, and then go into uh, any other application here again, I have the Bible and I read something that I like and I want to do a quick note I can type on here and type in or copy from here uh, Or type it well in this case. I'll type in um, 
in this case I'll type in whatever it is um, I'm thinking about and then hit that and it will save it to my notepad I mean to my OneNote but if you're on the web and you want to copy information press and hold select all or press and hold and just select how much of it you want then say copy open up your quick note press and hold say paste check the box and it automatically goes into your OneNote we can open up OneNote it says it has two messages and it just copied that into it so it's a very nice uh, handy utility that comes uh, as a Microsoft product actually that's coming with the Android Galaxy tab when you're done with the quick note you can just drag it down on the X and it'll take it off your screen okay so now what I want to do is talk about the keyboard the keyboard you can change the interface um, by hitting symbol and there's two pages of symbols you can use or you can go back to ABC and here's something even though I didn't buy the more expensive Galaxy tab that uses the pen I can still use text and write whatever I want to write here and I'll translate it for me simple as that simple So even without the more expensive Galaxy Tab with the pen, the stylus that comes with it, uh, and I think it comes with a nice drawing application, you still can use your, your keyboard for that. Now, uh, in case you have difficulty and you lose your keyboard, see this takes you from text back to keyboard. And I had, uh, I was doing something and by accident, um, I lost my keyboard and it, it just went back and forth between symbol and I'll show you what I mean so the change your the, the, um, the different types of layout microphone uh, keyboard smiley faces you can press and hold and it'll bring that up press and hold bring up the different types of layouts for your keyboard I want normal press and hold this one and go back to that I don't want that I want normal keyboard so if you get and if you can't figure out why it's not bringing you back to normal keyboard just press and hold and it'll you can change the layout so that's about it uh, hope you enjoyed this video uh, you can go find any particular topic below and go straight straight to that topic uh, by clicking on the link